Hi, welcome to the final lesson of our Redox unit. Today we're going to learn about factors affecting the amount of products in electrolysis. So from last time, we looked at selective discharge on electrodes. We were able to calculate and figure out the anode and cathode based on the half reaction equations. We then calculated the overall chemical reaction, the cell potential, and predicted the reaction outcome based on the half reaction equations that occur at various anodes and cathodes. We looked at specifically the applications of sodium chloride and copper sulfate electrolysis in lesson nine. Today, we're gonna to look at the factors that affect the amount of product in the electrolysis. Here, um, quick tip is that it depends on the quantity of electric charge passing through the cell. And recall, we looked at a few of these physics terms um, early on in the unit. Learn about electric current um, being in amps, electric charge is in coulombs, charge transported in one second by a current of one amp. Um, the equation of calculating charge is current times time. Faraday's constant is around 9,500 um, coulombs per mole of charge on one mole of electrons. This is one mole of electrons. Potential difference um, is in volts, and we've done a lot of calculations on that. Amount of energy in joules, right? We looked at spontaneity. And the electromotive force, greatest cell potential difference. Today, specifically on the products of electrolysis, we're gonna look at Q equals I times T, so charge and current and time, and how Faraday's constant helps us get to that conclusion. And then we also saw that cells in series have the same current flow through all the components, right? They follow the same path. And that's different for cells that are in parallel, for example. Let's take a look at the first question. How many grams of copper are deposited on the cathode of an electrolytic cell containing copper 2 chloride? If a current of 2 amps is run for 15 minutes, calculate the mass of copper. So we know, first off, Q equals I times T. So we can use this equation to calculate charge with the given information. So we plug in two amps and 15 minutes. Time is usually in seconds, so we convert 15 minutes to seconds, and this gives us a total of 1,800 coulombs. Now that we have coulombs, which is in charge, we need to convert that into grams of copper, right? So in order to do that, we're going to look at Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant describes charge on one mole of electron. Um, we can use this, 1800 charge, to figure out moles of electrons that are required in this specific electrolytic cell. So knowing Faraday's constant, it's in coulombs per mole. We have the charge of the electrons. So we divide 1800 coulombs by the Faraday's constant, and this gives us 0 0.01865 moles of electrons. So from this step, we're able to calculate how many moles of electrons are required to run this electrolytic cell. With 0 0.01865 moles of electrons, we then write the half reaction equation of copper. Um, and from this one, we can see that the moles of electrons versus the product of copper solids produced um, is two to one. Because of the molar ratios, we can easily calculate the product, the amount of products that will be formed. And we divide the 0 0.1865 by two, and this gives us the moles of copper solids. From the moles of copper solids, then it's easy to find the grams of copper deposited, right? In order to calculate the mass, we then multiply the moles by the molar mass of copper, which is 63.55 grams per mole. And with that, we're able to calculate that we require 0.593 grams um, that will be deposited 
on the cathode of this electrolytic cell. So a quick summary on finding the amounts of products. So we start with current and time that was provided. We then use the equation of Q equals I times T to calculate the charge. From the charge of electrons, we're then able to convert it into the moles of electrons um, required for the electrolytic cell by dividing it by the Faraday's constant. With this, we calculate the molar ratio in the half reaction equation to figure out how many moles of products relative to the moles of electrons that we have calculated what we need. From then, we can calculate the moles of products and then convert it into mass of products deposited by using the mass equation with moles times molar mass. So now let's give it a try. Um, how would this, what we just did, differ if copper 1 chloride was used instead? How about you guys try to calculate the mass of copper deposited again, but this time instead of copper 2, you're using copper plus 1. Let's try another problem um, asking about how much, again, would be formed if a solution passes through um, 1 amp for 30 minutes of silver nitrate um, and the second problem so if in any case you need help with the equations remember to flip back to the beginning of this presentation um, where there was a slide of all the equations that you'll need to calculate um, any form of electrolytic cell problems from all of this, you should be able to see that the amount of products in electrolysis depends on the current, the duration of the electrolysis, and the charge of the ion. Remember, the first equation we worked with in this video was Q equals I times T, Q being the charge, I being the current, and T being the time. So current is Q, duration is time, and the charge is Q. Sorry, current is I. Now let's look at one of the uses of electrolysis. One thing that is used in our daily lives um, is electroplating. What electroplating does is electroplating coats a metal with whichever other metal essentially that you want it to be coated with so for example here you would put the metal object that you want to be plated at the cathode so say you wanted to electroplate a fork um, in order to electroplate the fork with silver you have to put it in a solution of silver salt so the electrolyte must be the solution of silver salt the anode is a bar of impure silver. Remember we looked at copper earlier, um, impure copper, purifying copper um, at the cathode. It's kind of similar to that. The same, um, the same theory behind it to develop electroplating. Electroplating then, um, the electrons move from the anode to the cathode. Um, and you just have to remember that in terms of electroplating, the anode, typically is an impure um, of whatever you would want your object to be electroplated with. And the solution must be the solution of its ions, so silver salt in this case. So we looked at this, right? This was an example of electroplating. So electroplating happens um, in majority of the things that you use in a lot of the commercial products. And a quick look at the summary. So the final summary, this unit we learned about voltaic cells, galvanic cells, learned about electrolytic cells, and what, what would happen in equilibrium. So voltaic cells, we said is spontaneous, electrolytic, non-spontaneous. Voltaic cells uses the spontaneous chemical reaction to drive the electrical energy produced. The electrolytic cell um, 
uses and requires a power source in order to drive the chemical reaction that otherwise would not occur spontaneously. So because of that, the cell potential for voltaic would be positive, cell potential for electrolytic would be negative in order to demonstrate spontaneity, which is in terms of Gibbs free energy. At equilibrium, if the cell potential is at zero and if the spontaneity is at zero, so it's neither spontaneous nor non-spontaneous, then we know that this is a type of dead battery. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video um, learning process and we'll do more reviews before our final summative.